Even if you're a vibe coder and not a proper developer, you must know about ShadCN components. It's one of the most popular component libraries out there, and you can build amazing UIs with it. We just got an official update from ShadCN that will seriously upgrade your agentic workflows. In this video, you'll get a complete workflow on how to use this update to convert your agent into a ShadCN design system. Now, a little bit of background for you. I previously released a video where I showed an open source MCP server for ShadCN, which gave your AI agent all the important information about ShadCN so it could use those components better. Well, ShadCN officially announced on X that they're releasing their registry MCP server. If you think that this has the same function but is now just an official one, you're wrong. This offers a serious upgrade that's going to give you much better looking UI. Before we continue, let me guide you through a quick installation process. As you saw in my previous video, that installation was quite complex. This one is much simpler. I'm showing you the quick start guide, which I'll link in the description below. These are the installation commands and you have several options for what you want to choose. You can just go with NPM. This isn't limited to Claude code either. You can use it with cursor and VS code as well. For this demo, I'll be using Claude code to walk you through the workflow, but feel free to integrate it into whatever you want. Run the installation command in the project where you want the MCP server installed. The command will configure the MCP, install all dependencies, and save the configuration to a mcp.json file for Claude code. When you're ready to initialize it, open Claude code. Now there is an important thing here. I've noticed that using the dangerously skip permissions flag prevents the MCP from being detected on the first try, so you need to run without it. You'll see this indication showing that the MCP server is being added. If you open Claude code with the dangerously skip flag, this prompt won't appear, meaning the MCP wasn't added properly. Now, I'll use the MCP command, and you can see that the shadcn MCP is connected, along with all all of its available tools. Previously, the MCP server I showed you only provided data for ShadCN components. If you wanted to build something, you were limited to just those official ShadCN components and nothing else. What makes this MCP server different is that it allows you to search, install, and get information about components from public registries. ShadCN itself is a registry where all the ShadCN components are grouped together. You can install them through the command line tool and use them directly in your code without manually creating them. This is what AI agents take advantage of. They pull all the information about these registries, so they know everything that's available to install and how to use them. But now you can also access other registries, giving you a much wider range of components to work with. For example, I found this registry directory. It's still in beta, and honestly, there's not much there yet, but there are enough public registries available to use. The key point is that your Shad CN MCP now has access to far more components. One of the more popular registries is Aciternity UI, which is personally one of my favorite favorite component libraries. They build on top of existing components and create these amazing animated versions. If you're enjoying the content, please consider hitting the subscribe button. We try to get better with every video and your feedback in the comment section always helps us out. You can see here that I'm giving the message to fetch all components in the Aciternity UI registry using the MCP we just added. It goes ahead and pulls all the components and it found around 89 in the free public directory. This automation changes every Everything. You no longer need to manually search for effects, paste commands repeatedly, or give your agent the same instructions over and over. With this MCP, which understands multiple ShadCN libraries, you can take a strategic approach and build incredible interfaces. However, finding working public registries isn't straightforward. I searched for curated registry lists and found one, but most entries weren't actual registries or simply didn't function. For example, Neo Brutalism and Retro UI both failed to work. Even even though I was excited about RetroUI's components. The issue was their format didn't meet public registry requirements, so the MCP couldn't fetch their components. My solution was to have Claude search the web for repositories, add them to an MCP, and test their functionality. Through this iterative testing process, I created a working list for you. While it's still limited in size, it provides significantly more components than the base version. Here's the setup process. You need a components.json file in your repository. This requires shadcn to be initialized, which means you need either a React or Next.js app. 
First, set up your Next.js or React app, initialize shadcn, and you'll get the components.json file. Inside that file, you'll find a registries option where you can add additional registries. Currently, I have just a few registries in mind. I'll continue searching for others and list them in the resources below in the proper format so you can simply copy and paste. Want a specific registry? Just add it. Need another? Add a comma and include it after the first one. To preview a registry style, search for something like Origin UI. Browse their components, evaluate if that matches your desired UI aesthetic, then decide whether to implement it. In my case, I requested a beautiful landing page with animated components. It did build it out, but this is where we get another problem. Now, the problem is that even though these are animated components and they look really good, there isn't any structure to the site. It's not that bad. The animations and components have been implemented properly because of the context that the MCP gives. But again, this isn't organized work. I really do like the components and their animations. You can clearly see the potential of this MCP, how you now have access to so many components. Your AI agent has been seriously upgraded with the context of all these new components. And it's not just a simple list of components. If you look into the tools, they provide specific implementations for all the components and show how to actually use them. But again, you need a planned approach to really take advantage of this MCP. For example, even here, while making the landing page, it didn't know how many animated components to add. So it basically added all of them, even the ones that weren't necessary. And there were some layout issues as well. That's why we really need a concrete workflow for this. That's exactly what I did. I created a workflow specifically for the Shad CN MCP. If you want to use multiple libraries with this, all you need to do is configure your registries. If you want to use my workflow, I'll be dropping a commands folder. Simply place it in your commands directory. It includes four sub-agents that you can access through Claude code. That's what the workflow is based on. If you want to use them in cursor, just replace the MD with an MDC file and place them in your rules. It's that simple. Now, how does the workflow work? The first agent analyzes your requirements. You can provide a screenshot, a PRD for a whole application, or just the flow for a single page. In my case, I brainstormed some ideas and decided to build an AI-powered GitHub issue solver and PR platform. I only wanted to create the UI, so I gave it the page structure and the complete interaction flow. This way, Claude would understand how to connect the different pages I had in mind. You can either brainstorm these yourself or ask Claude or ChatGPT to generate them for you. I started with the first agent. I told it I wanted to build this app provided the page structure and flow, and it created a requirements.md file. It also set up a design docs folder with a new task, in my case, the GitHub Claude app. This way, you can have multiple tasks in the same repository, and each one keeps its requirements and component research separate. Claude won't mix them up. After that, I considered creating a new chat, but since this project wasn't very large and the UI wasn't heavy, I decided to continue in the same context. I checked it using Claude's context command, and it wasn't using much space at all. So I ran agent 2, told it to continue from the GitHub Claude app task, and it completed the research. What this does is examine all the Shad CN components and create a component research file. When we get to implementation, Claude already knows exactly which components to use. It won't hallucinate or bring in unnecessary ones, and the context window stays clean. Once that was done, I ran agent 3. Just like with agent 2, I told it which task to continue from. This is where the actual implementation begins. Now this this is a three agent workflow, but sometimes you'll have smaller tasks where you don't need the full process, like when you just want to add a card or make a small change. You don't need all that context management. That's why I created the express agent. It's a lightweight version of the workflow that skips the bigger steps. For example, after finishing my main task, I decided I wanted to make a menu retractable. I used the express agent, told it I wanted a specific icon for it, and it handled that perfectly. So that's the complete workflow. You can easily use it. It'll be available in my resources and you'll find the link in the description below. Go ahead and implement it. And again, the MCP is completely free. So this is what it ended up implementing with the components. This is just the UI for my project and it's really good for prototyping. You can get accurate prototypes built exactly how you want them really quickly. Now I can actually understand how my app would function because I've implemented this prototype. Other than that, the layout is pretty good. The small errors I usually run into, I didn't face them here. This was something we already had with the previous chat, but it improved things quite a lot. And the main thing now is that you can use components from any library, like Aciternity UI or the others I've shared, and make really good layouts with them. Now, you might have noticed that the theme switched up, and that's because these were just pre-recorded footage. The thing is, there's a site called Tweet 
tweak CN and it lets you add amazing themes on top of your already built out layer or structure. Right now I have this theme on, but before this I had the Claude theme implemented and there are lots and lots of themes available. So if you're working with Shad CN, you definitely need to know about this website. All you have to do is copy the code from there, give it to Claude and it will implement it. It's that simple. I'll also leave the link in the description below for you to use. That brings us to the end of this video. If you'd like to support the channel and help us keep making videos like this, you can do so by using the super thanks button below. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.